Welcome back to the crochet along for Domino the dog. This is part two. If you need part one, I will link it in the description box below. We have our head, our ears, and our body done. And we are going to make the front feet, the back feet, the tail, and do our assembly. We're gonna jump right into it with our front foot. We're gonna get started with the front foot, so grab the same color yarn as your head. We're gonna start with five single crochet into a magic circle, so do that however you'd like, or we can make a slip knot together. You can wrap the yarn around two fingers, crisscrossing at the top, pulling the back piece to the front, pulling up and making your slip knot. You can adjust your loop with your tail. We're gonna get set up with our yarn and chain two. Yarn over and pull through for chain one. Yarn over and pull through for chain two. We are gonna make five single crochet into that second stitch from the hook. So go underneath that second stitch. Yarn over, pull through. You'll have two loops on the hook. Yarn over and pull through. That's single crochet one. Then we're gonna make our second single crochet. Our third our fourth and our fifth single crochet. I'm gonna close up this loop. I'm gonna place a stitch marker on the last stitch of my round. Feel free to place it on the first stitch of the next if that's what you're used to. For round two, we're gonna make an increase in each stitch around. Remember to skip over this little bit here from our slip knot, and we're gonna go into the first stitch. In order to make an increase, we are gonna make two single crochet into that same stitch. Place your hook underneath both loops of that one stitch and we are gonna single crochet one. And then place our hook back in the same stitch, single crochet two, that's our first increase. Here, we are gonna move over and make our second increase. Move over another stitch and make our third increase. our fourth increase and our fifth increase will go into the stitch with our stitch marker. At this point you will have 10 stitches. If you're a beginner I would recommend to count each round um, but that's totally up to you. For round three we are going to increase in the first stitch single crochet in the next. Here is our first increase. Move over a stitch and make a single crochet. Our second increase. Move over and single crochet. Our third increase. Single crochet. Our fourth increase, single crochet, our fifth increase, and we will end with a single crochet. At this point, you should have 15 stitches. You can tighten up your loop at this point if you still have a little bit of a hole. For round four, we're going to increase in the first stitch, single crochet in the next two. We're gonna increase one, single crochet one, move over, single crochet two. Then we're gonna increase, this is our second increase. Then we're gonna make two single crochets, single crochet one, single crochet two, increase three, single crochet in the next two stitches increase four, single crochet in the next two, increase five, and then end with two single crochets. At the end of this round, you'll have 20 stitches. 
Moving on to round five through seven, we are gonna single crochet in the next 20 stitches. Go ahead and single crochet from round five through seven and we'll meet back. I'm reaching my last few stitches of round seven. We will have 20 stitches at the end of this round. Change your stitch marker. For round eight, we're gonna make one decrease, single crochet in the next two stitches. You're gonna place your hook underneath the front loop of the first stitch and then directly underneath the front loop of the second stitch. Yarn over, pull through. You'll have two loops on the hook. Yarn over and pull through. We're gonna single crochet in the next two stitches. Here's our second decrease. Go underneath the front loop of the first, the second, yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through. Single crochet in the next two. Here's our third decrease single crochet in the next two. Here is our fourth decrease. Single crochet in the next two. Our last decrease and single crochet in your last two stitches of the round. At this point, we will have 15 stitches. We are gonna stop here and stuff the feet, so grab another stitch marker so you don't lose your spot. And we're just gonna grab a small amount of stuffing. This is the only part we're gonna stuff. So we just wanna have a little bit. My only suggestion is to stuff this foot and then take out the stuffing and try to grab another bit of stuffing about equivalent to this size so that you have it for your other foot. That way you kind of have the same amount of stuffing for each foot. From here, we're gonna move on to round nine. We're gonna make one decrease and one single crochet. We have decrease one, single crochet, decrease two, then make a single crochet, decrease three, single crochet, decrease four, single crochet, and then your last decrease, end with a single crochet. From here you'll have 10 stitches we're gonna change our stitch marker. From round 10 through 20, go ahead and single crochet in the next 10 stitches. Don't forget to use that little trick that I used in video one for the head by using your stitch marker for counting. We'll meet back at the end of round 20. I'm finishing up my last few stitches around 20. Remember, we only stuff the foot, we're not stuffing anymore as we continue on. When I get to my last stitch, I'm gonna leave a long tail for assembly, so grab your scissors and we'll cut off a piece here. Then we're gonna fasten off by yarning over and pulling through. I like to give that end a tug. You can sew each foot shut or you can just set this aside for assembly. Here you'll notice that the foot has like this tiny divot and that will be the front of our foot. What I like to do is grab a yarn needle and tuck in this little piece here so I'm just gonna go from inside out and tuck in this little bit. I do like to sew my feet shut. It's just easier for me for assembly, so I'm gonna do that really quick. I just wanna make sure that I have the front of my foot. I'm gonna go through a stitch, then I'm just gonna go back and forth through two stitches. We want to make two front feet, so go ahead and rewind the video and make your second foot, and then we will continue on to the back foot. We're going to get started with the back foot. Go ahead and grab your contrasting color. We're going to start out with six single crochet into a magic circle. Feel free to do that however you'd like. I'm going to make a slip knot and chain two. So here is my slip knot. I'm gonna chain two, single crochet six times into the second chain from the hook. Here's single crochet two, three, 
four, five, and six. Tighten up that middle circle and then grab a stitch marker. You can place it on the last stitch of the round or if you like, you can place it on the first stitch of the next round. For round two, we're gonna increase in each stitch around. So we'll do this six times. Here is increase one, two, increase three, increase four, five, And then our last increase will go into the stitch with our stitch marker. At this point, you'll have 12 stitches. Tighten up that middle circle once again. Change your stitch marker. For round three, we're gonna increase in the first stitch, single crochet in the next, we'll be doing this six times around. So here is increase one, single crochet one, increase two, single crochet one, increase three, single crochet one, increase four, single crochet one, increase five, single crochet one, increase six, and then single crochet in your last stitch. You should have 18 stitches. Change your stitch marker for round four. We're gonna increase in the first stitch, single crochet in the next two. Here's increase one. Single crochet in the next two stitches. Increase two. single crochet in the next two and then repeat this pattern by increasing and single crocheting in the next two At this point, you'll have 24 stitches. Change your stitch marker. For round five, we're gonna increase in the first stitch, single crochet in the next three. We're also gonna be doing a color change at the end, so I'll show you how we do that. Here is increase one, single crochet in the next three, increase two, single crochet in the next three and then repeat that pattern till the end and I will walk you through the color change. We're doing our last three stitches of the round. I'm gonna show you here, when we reach our last stitch, we're gonna insert our hook. 
we're gonna yarn over and pull through and then we're gonna stop. I'm gonna actually go ahead and put this piece down because I'm gonna grab my other color, which is the one that I used for the head. What I like to do for amigurumi is make a knot. Since this part is gonna be on the inside, no one's gonna see it and it's just easier for me to change colors. Grab your other color, make a knot around your contrasting color, and then I'm gonna pull that all the way down. I'm gonna drop my blue yarn and I'm gonna get set up with my new color. Everything is all set. You're gonna yarn over with your cream yarn and pull that through. This way your last stitch is still blue, but your new stitch will be cream. Since that was our last stitch, we're gonna change our stitch marker. You'll have 30 stitches at this point. From round six through eight, we're gonna single crochet in the next 30. I'm just gonna do a few stitches here to get started. And once you're a few stitches in, you can actually cut this blue yarn. Let me know how the first part of your crochet along went and what color combos you used on your domino. I believe this video will be a bit shorter than the last, so we should be able to finish up our domino fairly quickly and um, I think you'll be excited when you're all finished. So go ahead and continue all the way around crocheting between round six and eight and we'll meet back at the end of round eight. I'm reaching my last few stitches of round eight but I wanted to show you here as you single crochet around sometimes your piece turns in on itself so you want to make sure to turn it inside out. To know if the stitches are the wrong way if you see this horizontal line you know that that is the wrong side of your work. Here you see this line going across. In order to find the right side of the work, you wanna look for these V stitches. And you won't see any of those horizontal lines. So that's just a little tidbit there. So just going on to my last few stitches of round eight. We are still gonna have 30 stitches. So go ahead and change your stitch marker. For round nine, we're gonna make a decrease, single crochet in the next three stitches. We'll be doing this six times around. Here is decrease one, single crochet in the next three stitches. Decrease two, single crochet in the next three and then you can repeat this till the end one decrease single crochet in the next three Reaching our last stitch here, you should have 24 stitches. For round 10, we're gonna decrease in the first stitch, single crochet in the next two. We'll be doing this six times around. Here is decrease one, single crochet in the next two, decrease two, single crochet in the next two and then repeat this pattern till the end. Reaching our last stitch, you should have 18 stitches at this point. 
For round 11, we're just going to single crochet in the next 18 stitches. Single crochet all the way to the end. At the end of this round, you should still have 18 stitches. I am going to change my stitch marker and then grab another stitch marker because we're going to stuff the feet at this point. We're going to do the same thing like we did with the front feet. We're only going to stuff this section and we're not going to stuff anymore. So grab a bit of stuffing, fill it up until it's nice and squishy. And then what I would do is take the stuffing back out and try to make an equivalent little ball. It's kind of hard sometimes to do it, but something that looks about the same size for your other foot. That way you already have it ready. You don't have to worry about it being bigger or smaller, even though sometimes it happens. It's just, it's hard to measure it out to be the same. Once you have it stuffed, we're gonna take out that extra stitch marker and we are gonna move on to round 12. We're gonna make one decrease, single crochet in the next stitch. Here is decrease one, single crochet, decrease two, then make one single crochet, and repeat this pattern, a decrease and a single crochet until the end. Reaching the end, we have 12 stitches. Change your stitch marker from around 13 to 20. We're gonna single crochet in the next 12 stitches. So no more stuffing needed, just single crochet all the way around and we'll meet back at the end of round 20. Finishing up my last few stitches of round 20, we are going to leave a long piece of yarn for attaching. I'm gonna fasten off by yarning over and pulling through. take out your stitch marker and then you can tuck in that piece like I showed you earlier just grab your yarn needle going from inside out pull that little piece through and if you'd like you can close this shut I like to make sure that I close it with that little color change in the back it's not very noticeable but it's just a personal preference we want to make two feet so go ahead and rewind the video make your second foot and then we'll meet back for the tail For the tail, grab your contrasting color. For round one, we're gonna make six single crochet into a magic circle. Do that however you'd like. Here, I'm gonna make a slip knot and chain two. I'm gonna single crochet six times in that second stitch from the hook. Here's my last single crochet. I'm gonna close up that middle hole. I'm gonna grab a stitch marker and place it on my last stitch of the round. For round two, we are gonna increase in each stitch around. Here is increase one, increase two, and continue to increase in each stitch. Okay, we're increasing in our last stitch here. You'll have 12 stitches total on this round. Go ahead and change your stitch marker, tighten up that middle hole. For round three, we're gonna increase in the first stitch, single crochet in the next. We'll do this six times around. So here we have increase one, single crochet one, increase two, single crochet one, and then continue this till the end, an increase and then a single crochet.
you will have 18 stitches on this round. For round four, we're gonna single crochet in the next 18 stitches, so go ahead and do that, and we'll meet back at the end of round four. At the end of round four, we still have 18 stitches. For round five, this is our last round, we're gonna make one decrease and single crochet in the next stitch. Here is decrease one, single crochet, and then go ahead and make a decrease and then a single crochet all the way to the end. We've reached our last stitch. We are going to fasten off, so leave a long tail for sewing. Yarn over and pull through. I'm gonna take out my stitch marker, and I'm just gonna add a little bit of stuffing to the tail. So that's it. We're gonna put the tail to the side, and we'll start with assembly neck. Okay, we're moving on to the big show, the assembly. This can be quite intimidating, um, especially if you're a beginner but it isn't that bad. So just make sure that you take your time and do not be hard on yourself because even I have a tough time with assembly and you'll probably see that in this video. <laughs> so I'm gonna start with the head and the body. Go ahead and grab your head. I had already uh, glued on the muzzle and if you haven't, do not worry about it. You can do it when we're done. For my pattern, it says to attach the body at the base of the head around round 26 and 27. So I'm just gonna take a pin and count to round 26 and 27. You do not have to use these exact rounds. This is just a guideline. But I am gonna put some pins around 26 and 27 and then see how my body looks once I have those pins in place. I'm gonna place my body near these pins to see what it looks like. And for me, that actually looks really good. So what I'm gonna do from here is grab a few more pins. I'm gonna go underneath both loops of my body and I'm gonna stretch it all the way to the round where I have my pin. This does feel a little awkward, but this is what works for me. So if you have another way of doing it, feel free to do that. But if you don't, try this way, you might like it. I just go underneath stitches of the body and pull it all the way until the round of where I have my pin. Now my bodies are a lot smaller than my head, so you really are kind of pulling it. And if you can't reach, don't worry, just go to a different round. Okay, once I have that all set and pinned, I just wanna make sure his body is centered. Right now it looks pretty good. I'm gonna take out these extra pins that are in his head and then I'm gonna grab my yarn needle. I'm gonna thread that yarn into my yarn needle and then we will start attaching. To begin attaching, you're gonna go through a stitch of the head. I'm gonna find that round where my pin is and I'm gonna pull that all the way through. Then I'm gonna go under two loops of the body. So you wanna grab one whole stitch, it'll be two loops and then you wanna go through that stitch of the body. That was my last stitch, and this is my first stitch. Go ahead and pull tight. Then I'm gonna go under another stitch of the head. And you'll have to take pins out as you go, but go into the next stitch of the body and pull tight. You're just gonna continue this all the way around the head. My few pieces of advice are to not skip a stitch of the body because then you will have some gaps in your work. Make sure to go through every stitch of the body. If you need to grab two stitches of the head, feel free to do that. And second, every few stitches, 
turn your animal over and make sure that your body is still centered. Sometimes when we're attaching, things can kind of get moved around really quickly. So make sure that you're constantly looking and making sure that your body still looks good. Continue going through a stitch of the head and a stitch of the body, and then I'll show you how I finish off at the end. I'm gonna be going up through my last stitch here and I'm gonna go slow because I'm gonna show you what I like to do. I'm gonna pull my yarn through and I'm gonna pull it slow because I wanna make a loop at the end of my yarn. Now this is gonna be all tangled on me so it might be a little hard to see. But just like we did with the muzzle when you're sewing, I wanna make a knot so I wanna go behind my loop. And this thing is like <laughs> completely twisted. Okay, so I have it straight. I'm gonna take my yarn needle and go behind my loop. And I'm gonna pull that. And I do like a little seesaw motion at the end. You can either weave it through the body or the head. It doesn't really matter. Pull tight and that little knot will be pulled right in. You don't have to do the knot. You can just weave in your yarn like normal, but I like to give it some extra security. Now I'm just gonna weave in the rest of my yarn throughout my body and then just snip off that extra bit of yarn. We are going to move on to the ears next. In my pattern it says to attach it between round 10 and 11, one on each side of the head. Some people like it a little higher or a little lower so just do what is your personal preference. This is totally just a guideline. I'm going to place my ears and see where I like them the best so you can do the same. So I have both of them pinned and I think I like this placement. I try to get at least one of them. I like that right one and I think I'm going to attach that first and then I'm going to come back and place the other one to see where I like it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go underneath the stitch of the head and then I'm going to grab two stitches of the ears. So you actually want to go under four loops. So as long as you have four loops of the ear, two stitches, you'll be totally fine. So you want to lay that piece over your ear and then you want to move over one stitch of the head. So I'm underneath the head and then I'm going to grab a stitch of the ear and then I'm going to go across to the other side and grab that stitch. When I pull this through, I'm just going to lay that blue piece on top and pull tight. We're going to do this all the way across the head. We're going to grab a stitch of the head and then grab two stitches of the ear. Okay, I'm going into my last stitch. I'm just gonna pick up this corner stitch here. And when I pull through, I'm gonna go slow. I'm gonna make that tiny loop at the end. I'm gonna take my yarn needle behind the loop. I'm gonna like seesaw this shut. It can be a little loose. And I'm gonna weave my yarn right next to that little knot that I made. Pull that in and that pulls that little knot right into your head. From here, just weave in any excess yarn that you have and then we'll move on to the second ear. I am 
seeing where I want to place my second ear and I tend to place it a little closer to my eye patch and I think that looks good to me. I'm gonna grab my yarn needle and I'm gonna start to assemble this ear. Just like the other side, I'm gonna go through a stitch of the head and then a stitch of the ear. I'm reaching my last stitch here and it was definitely easier for me to assemble this with the piece sewn shut so I think I'll continue to do that. Here I'm going to do my last stitch and I'm going to pull this through slowly because I'm going to make a knot once again and then I'm going to weave my yarn in right next to my knot. Remember once again you do not have to do this step. This is totally a personal preference but I do like it and I do like that it secures things very nicely. Okay, our dog is coming to life. You can either flip the ears in or out. It's totally up to you. Some people like to flip the ears out this way, so do what you think looks cute to you. We're gonna move on to the front feet next. We are gonna attach the front feet next to each other underneath the head. I like to place them just to get an idea of where I wanna put them, and I like to center them underneath the tip of the nose. Once I have them where I like them, I take one arm off, and I'm gonna start with the the first arm. I am starting a few stitches back. I'm starting about one or two stitches back. I'm going to go through a stitch between that head and the body and then I'm going to grab a corner stitch of that front foot. I'm going to go into my next stitch of the head and the body and then I'm going to go underneath two stitches of the, the foot. So you wanna go under four loops total. And then I'm gonna move over to my next stitch of my head and body. Grab a piece of the foot and continue that. Okay, I have one more stitch to do of the foot, so I'm gonna go through my last stitch of the head and the body. And then I'm gonna grab a corner stitch here of my foot, and then I'm gonna do my same trick where I make a little loop and then go behind my loop. And I'm gonna pull that tight. Now that's a pretty loose knot, but I wouldn't worry one bit because we're going to weave in this piece of yarn. I'm going to pull in the knot and then I'm going to weave in that piece of yarn well. Okay, one arm down. I'm going to grab my second arm, pin it in place. I'm going to start again from the outside to the inside. Thread your yarn into your yarn needle and then do the same thing on this side. You're going to start a stitch or two back grabbing a stitch or two of the head and body, and then going into the foot. I'm about to pick up my last stitch of the head, and I just wanna show you that I'm kind of encroaching on my other stitch from my other foot. So I really went over on the other side and I'm pulling that all the way through. So it's pretty far over. Then I wanna pick up a corner stitch of my foot. This is my last stitch of the foot. Then I'm gonna go slow, get my loop, and then make my knot. By going all the way over onto that front foot, I feel like it just secures the feet even better because they're really close to each other. So now that I have my knot, I'm just gonna weave in my yarn, And then you can see here how attached these legs are. They're not flopping around. 
they're attached really well. We'll be placing the back feet on next and these could maybe be the trickiest pieces to assemble. So I like to place the back feet on a slant between round two and five and I like that color change to be on the bottom if possible. So grab a lot of pins and place your foot and just kind of see how it looks. I think that's the best way to approach it. This is kind of how it'll look at a slant and then I'm constantly flipping him over just to see how he would be sitting. The feet should be facing out and I do have that color change in the front so when I attach him I probably will turn that over. I'm going to start with this foot first. Go ahead and thread your yarn in your yarn needle and then start attaching by going underneath a stitch of the body and then going up a corner stitch of the foot. Don't forget to check and turn your guy over just to, to make sure that things didn't get out of whack. When I reach my last stitch, I do the same knot trick where I leave a loop, go behind the loop, pull it through, and then you can weave in next to your knot and the rest of your yarn. Okay, so we have one foot done and I think it looks good, so I'm going to do the other foot next. Okay, so the back feet are done and the last thing we have to do is to put on the tail. Okay, so grab your tail. I attached my tail between round five and nine of the body, but really you can just sit your guy down and just make sure that the tail is not too far. Go ahead and thread your yarn and your needle and then we're just gonna go up through a stitch of the body and a stitch of the tail. Make sure to go through each stitch of the tail and not to skip a stitch. When we reach that last stitch of the tail, I'm just gonna make a knot as I have in the other ones and then weave your yarn through. Yay, he's done, he looks amazing. Well, we're gonna add one more thing to him, but I'm so proud of you guys, woohoo! If you wanted to add a little collar to him, just go ahead and grab any color that you'd like. We're gonna make a simple slip knot by wrapping the yarn around two fingers. You can push the back to the front and then pull up on that slip knot. For this guy, I think I, I chained about 20 to 25. I believe it was like 25 chains. You can go ahead and chain and then wrap it around your dog's neck just to see how long you need it. Make sure to leave a good amount of tail because you want to tie a knot in the back and weave in the ends. 
So here he needs a little bit more. So yeah, I ended up doing 25 chains. And that was good. So all I did was I left a long tail, fastened off the end, gave that a tug, and then just tied the collar around his neck. I have made a felt heart and a felt bone. I just cut it out um, to make like a miniature version of it and glued it onto the collar and it just adds so much cuteness to him. Once you make that knot, just weave in the yarn tails into the body and you are done. Thank you guys so much for sticking through this crochet along with me. I really appreciate it. If you like this tutorial and you would look forward to some more, please subscribe to my channel. And also don't forget to grab your free pattern and your template on yarnsociety.com.